Before moving on to the short-term mission and partnership uh, issues related to resources, just one uh, source of information that may be helpful for you. The Lausanne uh, Committee for World Evangelization and their various working groups have put together what they call the Lausanne Standards, uh, Affirmations and Agreements for Giving and Receiving Money and Mission. Uh, and you can find that at www.lausannestandards.org. And so again, there's a lot of materials and resources out there to help navigate some of these complicated issues, but that's one place that you can look for uh, really an international team of, of experts uh, putting together that particular guideline. So let's talk about short-term teams in church planting. Um, there are, unless you're working in a fairly remote area in church planting, you probably have had exposure to short-term teams coming. Typically they're expatriate teams that are coming in from another country. And uh, by the way, the Korean church is sending out uh, many, many short-term teams. They're not just coming from America and they're not just coming from Europe. Uh, it may also be a short-term team coming from another part of your own country. Maybe there's a partner church in another part of the country that's going to send a team of people over to assist with you. What I'm talking about uh, will relate primarily to short-term teams who are coming from abroad. And the, I, I want to have some do's and don'ts on uh, short-term teams and church planning. Now, first of all, a couple of don'ts, things to avoid. First of all, don't resist them. Uh, the fact of the matter is, um, the Americans are coming, I guess you could say. The fact of the matter is the short-term teams are coming. And um, many uh, church planters have the attitude, oh, it is so much work when these teams come through. They don't speak the language. We have to find a place for them to stay. We have to help them find, get food. We have to bust them around to get them to where they got to go. There's a lot of organization and a lot of work for that. And if it's a little church plant, not very many people, to try and manage this short-term team, which may only be there for a week or two. Um, and so it's a lot of work. And so some church planters say, you know, it's not worth it. Uh, the benefit that we get out of these teams is, is just really not worth all the energy. It's a distraction uh, from our normal ministry. And of course, it can also happen that the short-term team members, they, uh, they may not know the cultural sensitivities of the locality and they do something that's embarrassing and then the church has to somehow uh, figure out how to uh, iron that out. And so some church planners just say, look, I just don't, I just don't need any short-term teams. And I do think that that can be a mistake um, and we should try and find ways to effectively use short-term teams. And that's sort of the, the flip side is don't be afraid to say no. Some church planters have the feeling, well, you know, what that team wants to come and do is really doesn't make sense at all. It's just not going to be helpful. Uh, but, you know, they want to come and they'll probably uh, start a partnership or there'll be other resources they bring. And so we'll just say yes and somehow accommodate them. So you've got the two extremes. You've got the ones who say, no, we don't want any team. You've got the others who say, well, let them come and just kind of do whatever they want. And I think you need to find that balance of saying yes to those teams that you can work well with, that are teachable, that are willing to, to do ministry that's meaningful. Say no to those teams that are just not going to be helpful and are not going to really contribute to the ministry. The other thing is don't allow short-term teams to set your agenda. By that, sometimes a short-term team will say, well, we want to come for a week, and this is what we want to do. Well, that's usually a red flag from the start. Um, now, they might say, you know, this is our talent, and this is what we have to offer. Can you use that? But you should have the freedom, like I said, to say, well, actually, that's something we just, we just can't really use. That's a talent we don't need. But if a team says, well, we want to come, and this is all we want to do, um, and they're sort of determining the agenda of what happens, they're probably going to be hard to work with, and uh, that agenda may not fit your agenda of what you think is important. And so you need to not allow the short-term team to dictate where the focus of the church is going to go. 
and you need to do what is best for the church. Don't allow short-term teams to undermine local initiative. And let me give you an example of this. I know some of the churches that were started in Eastern Europe shortly after the fall of the Iron Curtain um, had a lot of summer teams coming in. Of course, Americans have vacation in the summertime, so that's when a lot of these teams would come. And there were some churches that were initially started through summer teams coming through and doing evangelism, and there were some churches started that way. But um, as uh, the uh, church planner was trying to motivate the local believers to do evangelism, they said, well, what do you mean? That's what, that's what the Americans do when they come in the summer. That's what evangelism is. <laughs> they said, well, wait a minute. Um, you know, that, that's kind of how we started. And, you know, in those days, everybody wanted to meet an American. And so that was a good thing. But we need to learn to share our faith. We need to take responsibility for evangelism. And quite frankly, for some of them, that's kind of like a new thought. Like, oh, oh, gee, I guess we should, I guess we need to learn how to do that. Uh, but then again, you see now, if you did something like, say, the, all the evangelism with the English camps or something, well, how are the local people who don't speak English, they can't do English camps. So what will evangelism look like for the local people? So we have to be careful. Sometimes short-term teams can end up undermining local initiatives. They might say, well, gee, we're not as talented. Boy, we have this great music group come in, but, eh, you know, we're not very musical. We could never do that um, or things like that. So you have to make sure that the short-term team is not going to make your own people feel like they just can't do ministry right or they're not good enough or will let somebody else do it. Here's some do's, some things to do with short-term teams. Define the short-term team projects specifically and strategically. In other words, as a church planter, your leadership team of the church plant should be determining which projects are going to be most helpful. And think about which projects that short-term mission team can actually make a contribution to. And for example, some churches have said, well, um, what if we were to have a medical clinic? Say the, uh, it could be that the medical services are very limited in the place where, where you're at. And so they might have a team of doctors or dentists come in and do a medical clinic. And that can be a real contribution uh, to the community and it can give the church credibility and goodwill. Um, that's just one example. Um, maybe that short-term team is going to come in and help with a construction project. Uh, but make sure that you are, as the church planner, determining what's going to be helpful and what really fits in and what is going to be strategic. And then communicate frequently and clearly. A lot of the problems that arise with short-term teams are just simply because communication is poor. Uh, that may be a language issue. If uh, you don't speak English and the other team speaks English or whatever their language is, Korean, uh, German, whatever, you're having a language issue. Um, but you do want to try and keep the communication flowing so the expectations are clear. Is there a certain way that women should dress? Some cultures, women should not wear short sleeves. Are you communicating that so they bring appropriate clothing? Simple things like that. Are you communicating so that we're clear on what the arrangements will be when they arrive? Are we clear about what they will do when they arrive, what they won't do? Um, and the more you can communicate openly, clearly in advance, the more you can avoid some of the confusion and conflict later. Insist on good preparation and leadership. Unfortunately, some of these short-term mission teams are not well prepared. Some of them are young high school kids who may not be very mature in their faith. Um, how have they been prepared? What kind of training? What kind of cultural sensitivity have they learned? Um, how have they been spiritually prepared? There are actually, believe it or not, some short-term teams that churches in America send out that have non-Christians on the teams. Now, sometimes that might be a non-Christian doctor who's on a medical team, and so he's making a contribution. But it may be a youth team that they're just a young person that's, that's not a Christian. So what is the preparation? What is your expectation? And who's going to lead that team? Is that a person who's led a team before? Is that a person who's been in your country before? Uh, how well prepared is the leader to really give leadership to that team? So you should have your standards as a church planter on which teams you'll accept and which you won't. And just be clear about that. 
And then make sure you include local believers as much as possible. For example, for a long time, English camps was a big uh, uh, short-term team sort of project where a group of English speakers would come in. You'd go and rent a camp or a retreat center. You might even do it in the church and have English classes. And you'd invite non-Christians and you'd uh, seek to build relationships and maybe share the gospel. Well, uh, the more effective ones always included some of the believers from the local church so that there was some continuity. When the American team left, there were local people who'd built some relationships there. Uh, if that team is just totally isolated on its own, um, then if it's an evangelistic event, the continuity is going to be difficult. And even with construction projects, it's always good to have local people coming alongside, building relationships, and having the local commitment. So include local believers as much as possible and then proactively recruit future workers through the short-term mission. In other words, the fact of the matter is that nowadays the majority of missionaries, foreign missionaries, have gone on short-term mission teams before. And that's how God begins to speak to their heart and say, is long-term mission something for you? Now, when we worked in Germany, uh, we were not very welcoming to short-term teams, and that ended up in us not having very many new missionary recruits to Germany because of that because we just weren't providing those opportunities. And that probably was not a very smart thing on our part. But it is an opportunity to proactively recruit coworkers. Um, and even if they're coming from your own country, they may catch a vision. We had teams from Northern Germany coming down to Southern Germany where we were. And some of the people who came, they, they got a real passion for evangelism. They got greater desire to be involved in church planting and so on through that experience. So recruit future workers through those short-term mission experiences. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Uh, my colleague uh, Robert Priest uh, at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School uh, has done a lot of research. We've had numerous doctoral dissertations uh, written on this whole subject of short-term missions. How can we do this better? What's the real impact of short-term missions? Um, and the impact in both the receiving end of where the, the church plant or the project is taking place and both on the sending end where the local church sending those people out. And um, he has edited a book on effective short-term mission that you can look at to get more information. Uh, really good, solid research and scholarly information about how to do short-term missions better.